After the conclusion of the Bleach manga, it is safe to say that there were a lot of unanswered questions and areas for speculation. One of the biggest mysteries that fuels most of the criticisms for the ending of Bleach Online is the fact that we never get to learn about what the true power of Ichigo's Bankai was. We did get to see Ichigo activate his true Bankai in chapter 678, but it was very short-lived, having been taken out by Yuhobak just one page later. The aim of this video is to dive into some of the theories and discussions surrounding the the power of Ichigo's true Bankai. We will use various points from the manga to back up the theories that are proposed in this video, including referencing how fearful Yuhobak was of his true Bankai form. He was so afraid that he had no choice but to eliminate it only moments after it was activated, meaning that he has in fact seen multiple futures where he was defeated by the power of Ichigo's true Bankai. So without further delay, let's discuss the hidden power of Ichigo's true Tensazangetsu blade, a power so fearsome that Yuhobak did not want to even risk fighting against it. Before the video begins, only 20% of the people who actually watch my content are subscribed to the channel. If you enjoy these videos, then subscribe and stick around for more content just like this. Now let's get back to the topic of the video. Before we can speculate and theorize about the power of the true final form of Tensa Zangetsu, let's discuss everything that we know about it thus far from its brief appearance within the manga. In chapter 678, Ichigo speaks to Yuhobak about how he has overcome despair time and time again. This is before he raises both of his blades in the air one on top of the other as he activates his true Bankai form for the first time. After a burst of energy, his dual blades merge into a large blade as it takes up the shape of a small black blade which is encased in a white outer shell. Now this form of the new Tensa Zangetsu was immediately destroyed by Yuhobak, but after his Zanbakdo is restored thanks to the combined efforts of Tsukishima and Orihime, we see his new Tensa Zangetsu once again, as he unleashes an incredible enhanced Getsuga Tensho against the monstrous Yuhobak, who at this stage had his powers enhanced after he had absorbed the Soul King. This stronger Getsuga Tensho is a golden blast of energy that was strong enough to cut the leader of the Quincy into two. This single attack did in fact kill Yuhobak, but thanks to his powers of the Almighty, he was able to reverse his own death. Now, something fascinating happens to Ichigo Zanbakuto in chapter 684. After Yuhobak survives the attack and returns to restart the collapse of the human world, Soul Society, and Huekomundo. Then following Uryu firing the still silver arrowhead through Yuhobak's heart, Ichigo is given the perfect opportunity to kill Yuha as he charges to towards him with his new Tensa Zangetsu blade. The leader of the Quincy attempts to break his sword for the second time, but it ends up only breaking the white outer casing, revealing underneath it a blade that resembles Ichigo's original Shikai Zanbakdo Zangetsu, the very form that I have referenced in previous videos as his false Shikai. Now I'm pretty sure that you can understand where all of this confusion about Ichigo's powers is stemming from. Firstly, his new Tensa Zangetsu blade is revealed to take up two forms, and secondly, we were never told what the power of Ichigo's true Bankai is. Just what on earth was Yuhobak so afraid of? Aside from the fact that his new Bankai is really sharp and it can cut really well, what is the true power of his blade? If you recall, Ichigo had all of his Quincy and Hollow powers absorbed by Yuhobak in chapter 680, but thanks to Tsukushima, he had these aspects of his powers restored. This was a crucial part of him being able to use the new form of his Tensa Zangetsu again, because Ichigo's Bankai is in fact a combination of all of the different powers powers that he has exhibited throughout the series. His newly completed Bankai incorporates his hollow powers via the horn that grows out of his head which allows him to fire Seros. His fullbring powers which we know involves the ability to create objects or manipulate the shape of them with Reiatsu, which he does to form the armor around his body. His inherited Shinigami powers allow Ichigo to channel his Reiatsu into his Zanbakdo, so this gives him control of his internal power, while contrastingly his inherited Quincy powers allow him to control and absorb Reishi from outside of his body. All of these separate core components of his true Bankai come together to make his Tensa Zangetsu a fairly broken Zanbakdo. However, these individual aspects of his powers and how they are exhibited don't still explain the singular main power of his true Bankai. After years of theorizing and speculating,
speculating, I believe that the power to overcome despair by shattering the grinding gears of fate is in fact the power of his new Bankai. This allows him to reject fate in a similar way to Orihime, who has a complementary power to Ichigo, which is to reject Phenomenon itself. This is how Orihime is allowed to defend herself with her barriers or heal any fatal injuries. There were a lot of fans who were disappointed by the sudden defeat of Yuhobak because of the confusing appearance of Ichigo's original Shikai Zanbakdo, but I have explained why this sword had appeared in an earlier video on my channel where I talk about what had happened to Ichigo Zanbakdo at the end of Bleach. I believe that the true power of his Bankai has been foreshadowed within Bleach years before its reveal, via Chapter 0 which was published at the end of Volume 23. Here we learn about Ichigo's desire and in hindsight how it is pretty plausible to correlate this to the power of Ichigo's true Bankai form. Throughout Bleach, the character of Ichigo is intrinsically linked to the theme of shattering fate. He says this himself to Yuhobak, that he has overcome despair time and time again. Somehow Ichigo has always been able to overcome impossible obstacles, as he proves throughout the story of Bleach that he can fight against the grinding gears of fate and not be at the mercy of the cruelty of predetermined destiny. This idea that Ichigo's ultimate power is to shatter fate is prevalent amongst fans, and I tend to agree with them and believe that the power of his true Bankai is to wield a blade powerful enough to shatter fate. During the official Bleach prequel titled Chapter Zero Side A The Sand, we learn about Ichigo's feelings prior to the start of the series, and what he had experienced leading up to his fateful encounter with Rukia in Chapter 1 of the manga. Side A The Sand follows an average day in the life of Ichigo. At the end of the school day, his friends try to talk to him about a TV show, but he has a disinterested expression on his face, that is until he senses that something has happened. This is where the poem begins, as Ichigo leaves school in a hurry. He arrives at his destination to discover spots of blood on the ground, as an elderly spirit tells Ichigo that the boy is gone. Ichigo can do nothing but to helplessly agree with the old man. He says to himself that he can see ghosts, touch them and even speak to them, but this is all that he could do for them. Sometimes they disappear without warning like the spirit of this little boy that Ichigo had wanted to give a toy aeroplane to. He says that he doesn't know what happens to them, but sometimes they leave behind spots of blood that only he can see, and there is always this lingering smell of fear. He then admits to himself that no matter how strong he may get, he is unable to protect them. Now this defeated expression on Ichigo's face should convey to you how much this means to him. Without any words, you can tell that he is deeply impacted by the loss of this boy. Realizing that he is powerless and could do nothing for the boy cuts his heart like cold steel. Ichigo leaves the toy where the boy was last seen, as we later see him encounter the spirit of a little girl. He comforts and reassures her, telling her not to cry and he promises that he will be back to visit her again. This is a breakdown of the events that occur, and now let's look at the poem which helps us to better understand Ichigo's problem, and how fate is heavily involved with it. The poem is written from Ichigo's perspective, and it begins with, the world changes, it turns. Each time it touches the sun and the moon, it takes a new shape. This is in reference to how with each rotation of the earth, passing of a day into night and vice versa, the world that we reside within changes. We are powerless to stop the world from rotating and we cannot stop these changes from occurring. This powerlessness is spoken about in the next verse. The only thing that does not change is my powerlessness. This beautifully complements the first verse and it emphasizes Ichigo's desperation for wanting to grasp fate by his hands and steer it in his direction. The poem concludes with the following verses. It's turning. If fate is a gear and we are the sand that falls between those gears, then there is nothing that we can do. So I wish for strength. If I cannot protect them from the grinding gears of fate, then give me a strong blade and enough strength to shatter fate. Metaphorically, our position in the world is described as our life is pulled into the direction of fate and destiny, as we have little control over what happens to us. Just like the sand that is crushed between the rotating gears, we are powerless to stop the gears and are taken in the direction that the gears are rotating towards. Ichigo has seen how cruel fate can be, and it's for this reason that he wishes for the strength to not just protect his loved ones from fate, but to shatter it completely. Now ultimately, it was thanks to Rukia that he had gained power in the first place, and for once he was finally able to fight against fate. He was no longer powerless and he had consequently intervened when his family were threatened by the hollow Fishbone D, similar to how his mother was attacked by the Grand Fisher, but now he can do something about it. No longer does he have to helplessly stand by, as the spirits that he encounters are inevitably devoured by hollows. Ichigo Zanbakdo allows him to cut through fate and overcome the odds in impossible situations. The crushing gears of fate were broken by Ichigo. His wish to receive 
leave a blade strong enough to shatter fate was fulfilled. Thus, fighting against fate and destiny becomes an intrinsic theme which always resurfaces within the pages of Bleach. We see the idea of fate brought up during Ichigo's battle against Byakuya, Ukiara, Aizen, and even Yuhobak. As long as he is wielding his blade, he is able to protect the weak and resist against the crushing gears of fate. During the Thousand Year Blood War arc, Yuhobak had stated that he has destroyed every Bankai in the future, and that there is no power in this world that can defeat him, as he has already overcome it in every possible future that he has seen. And this is thanks to the powers of the Almighty, which in a way are a physical manifestation of predetermined fate and destiny, as he himself states that there is nothing in the world that he has not already seen and overcome. His ability allows him to alter the future to affect his immediate present, thus explaining how he has instantly destroyed Ichigo's new Tensai Zangetsu blade just one page after it was revealed. From this one precautionary act, we can only begin to imagine how powerful the full extent of Ichigo's new Bankai must be. Yobak had ultimately failed because he had ignored the vision of the future, where he was actually defeated by Ichigo. In chapter 672, a key piece of foreshadowing is dropped, where Yuobak has a vision that he mistakes to be a nightmare, where he briefly sees that he is confronted by Ichigo in his false Shikai form, the very form that he had taken up after he had awakened his own Shinigami powers following the Shattered Shaft training with Urahara right at the start of Bleach. It was this iconic original Shikai Zambakdo form that Ichigo had first wielded during the invasion of the Soul Society. This was the blade that he had used which had given him the power to cut through fate and to rescue Rukia. It is iconic not only in appearance, but because it was the first form that he had taken up after having activated some aspect of his own inherited power. Because up until that point in the series, he was using powers that he had borrowed from Rukia. Chapter 672 shows us Ichigo wielding his original Shikai blade to kill Yuhobak, the very blade that had manifested in chapter 684 and was actually used to defeat him. Now, I may just be reading between the lines too much, but this is what I think of when I try to imagine where Kubo was going in terms of Ichigo's powers and the thematic direction of his character. While everyone else's Zanpakdo's and powers are fairly straightforward and are explained in the series, on the other hand, Ichigo's powers and forms have been ever-changing and constantly evolving. Gradually, he incorporated a new side to his power with every form that he had taken up and each power that he had awakened, which was kind of like a stepping stone, leading up to the reveal of his true Bankai and true Shikai. I refer to these forms as true because they combine all aspects of his power. This is what sets Ichigo's Bankai apart from everyone else's in the series. Throughout the Thousand Year Blood War arc, Ichigo's Bankai was hinted at being special ever since Eburn and Kilge had failed to steal it at the start of the series, all the way up until Yuobak had deemed it to be too dangerous to even contend with. Yuobak did say that he had eliminated every Bankai in the future, but he still was willing to entertain them to some extent. Like during his encounter with Yamamoto or Ichibe, he did not end up destroying their Zanbakdo upon their Bankai activations. However, when it comes to Ichigo Zanbakdo, it appears to be an exception, as his blade was the only one that Yuobak had actively tried to break in almost every encounter that he has with him. Even at the start of the arc, when Ichigo first encounters Yuhobak, we see that Hashward ends up breaking his Tensai Zangetsu into two in chapter 515. While Yuhobak's ability the Almighty may be the most broken power within Bleach, through my speculating and theorizing, we can appreciate the power of Ichigo's true Bankai and understand how it is one of the most hacks powers in the series, even being able to overcome the Almighty. For now, all we have is theories and speculation as for the actual power of Ichigo's new Tensai Zangetsu. We may get to learn more about it if Kubo feels like continuing his work via the upcoming Hell arc of the Bleach manga. Additionally, with the way that we are getting more context and extended scenes within the anime adaptation of the Thousand Year Blood War arc anime, there is every possibility that Ichigo's new Bankai will be elaborated upon in anime form, especially if the final battle against Yuhobak is expanded upon. Now, we've reached the point of the video where I want to hand over the discussion to all of you. What do you think about the true power of Ichigo's new Tensai Zangetsu? Let me know your thoughts in the comments, and I look forward to reading about if you agree or disagree with my thoughts and speculation. Lastly, thank you for making it to the end of this video, and I can't wait to see you in my next Bleach video. If you enjoy my content, then you can support my channel through Patreon for as little as a dollar a month, or even through YouTube by becoming a channel member. You will gain access to exclusive channel perks and a Discord server which I frequently use. So become a member of my Zero Division and be the first to know about my upcoming videos. And once again, thank you for sticking around till the end of the video, and whatever you contribute will mean a lot to me.